If you're looking to combine one of Volkswagen's 16 valve engines, a KR, 9A, ABF for example, with either twin carbs or ITBs, and at some point, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a clash between your intake length and your cooling pack with your radiator. So I'm gonna show you what I've done on mine, what works, it's proven, let's have a look. Okay, here is a standard intake from an ABF. And from the opening, this bit, which is, a, I suppose it's the equivalent of a trumpet on a twin carb, to the valve would be about 400 mil. So if we have a look at my ITBs here, so this setup just to demonstrate with just the trumpet added, I've measured this earlier, that's actually about 300 mil. And at this point already, we're in a conflict zone between hitting the bonnet. If we angle it lower, we're getting close to this ABF coolant flange here, which is already aimed further down than a KR, I believe. And then we're also into the realm of, the, of where a, a factory radiator would be and a VW cooling fan without going to a slim line. So you see, we need a better setup. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is we're gonna shorten this and we're gonna to lose torque. And, you know, if we're going through all this trouble, why would we want less torque in the factory single throttle intakes out? So, my Mark II, its primary focus these days is as a track car, which means you need additional cooling. So if we have a look here, I have an additional oil cooler, so air to oil, uh, mounted low down, and this is where one of the big bumper air holes, air ducts, would be uh, anyway, so it's using that hole. I've just welded some extra tabs on this, this part of the factory radiator support, keep it low down, out of the way, from any, uh, any um, path of the intake system. So, we've got the oil cooler with its um, thermostatic sandwich plate here. We've got something slightly unusual, we've got a Lupo GTI oil filter, it's slightly shorter, means I have to keep on top of those oil changes. And we've got the factory ABF, or we see them on GTIs as well, uh, in Mark II's the heat exchanger. So you've got a um, heat exchange between oil and water, and it, it just um, it's probably the most balanced of the options you can get so I've got a whole lot there. So when performance is a concern generally people go for the biggest radiator possible. But as we've already mentioned we're now contending with our intake packaging so that leaves us with two choices. We can either go for something low mounted or we need something that's compact or maybe tall instead of wide. So we've got a tall but narrow triple core radiator from a Honda, EK Civic maybe, mm, I'm not a Honda boy. Let's see how we fit this in, because I've made a custom bracket that retains part of the original rad support uh, and some bits of steel I made up myself, so let's see how this mounts. Cables out the way. Look at that. Looks like it's made for it. Topos on. Do it 
clips it, and that's it. So we've seen the uh, packaging of the cooling system, all the space that's available for an intake. Well, this is my intake setup, 3D printed. We've got an air box, so I can put an air filter on. We've got trumpets. Uh, you might have seen the, uh, the alloy one earlier, so something still to do is to try a few different lengths on the dyno. Curved. So curved gets away from the top of the bonnet where a lot of people have, you might have seen some people have cut holes, throttle bodies coming out, a famous uh, Sprint Sirocco does that. But the, th the uh, factory intake is curved, so if it works for VW, it works for me. Let's have a look. With this throttle body and curved intake setup, engine all the same as it was before. This is producing over 10 pound foot of torque more and 203 horsepower. Look at all this space. Maybe room for a supercharger, or an intercooler. Is 200 horsepower, 170 pound foot enough in a Mark II Golf? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Finish it off, let's put the slam panel back on. See how it fits with this heavily customised setup. Easy does it, it's got new bits. Yeah, a little bit. So there you go. So I just need some screws, wherever they are. So that should sit there. <laughs> yeah, I should have had the screws in my pocket, really. You might have seen earlier that the radiator sits on some rubber mounts on a little welded uh, new support down the bottom. But it's also supported on the top of the slam panel with, we've got a rib knot here and we've got this bracket with a little reinforced rib for strength. And we've got another one over this side. So just in there. There's a captive knot on the little bracket here make it easier to fit like so. One of the final pieces of the puzzle, nice big air filler. Let's fit it. Show it actually fits. A handy hole here. Three clips, pretty standard. Go. Hopefully you can see this space all around. So hopefully that has given you some ideas. I'm not saying that this is the best setup, but it's the one I came up with and it's been tried, tested, it's been in a traffic jam in summer, it's been in some track action on a rolling road, no problems, good cooling temps and allows me to do what I want with intake length. So keep tuning into the channel, I'm sure the next videos will involve fixing some of Alistair's broken motos. <laughs>